All right, y'all, listen. I want to extend my deepest apologies for getting this episode to you later than expected. I was supposed to post this on Friday. Today is now Tuesday that I'm recording this Tuesday night. I'm going to try to get this up and running for you on Wednesday, uh, which is tomorrow. But I, y'all, after I got back from the trip, which I will disclose where I went in this episode, but I got back from the trip, had a day to gather myself. And then the next day I was off again to the DMV area to celebrate with my best friend who turned 38 as well on uh, February 12th. So it was a jam-packed weekend full of shenanigans. If you were following me on Instagram, then you saw the foolery that went down with April's 38 Kisses event. Lots of choreography, lots of content creation, lots of just pure fuckery. So that's what I've been wrapped up with. And I brought my Mac with me being ambitious and thinking that, you know what, I'm going to edit the podcast on the way down. Nope, knocked out until it was my turn to drive and didn't pick up the laptop at all during the weekend. It stayed where it needed to stay in the bag. So again, my apologies. Here we are. We're going to talk about where I went, how it was. I'm going to give you the full details of my trip right about now you're tuned in to the ting's nice podcast you know the frequency i'm 38 you're <laughs> what is up you guys welcome back to another episode of ting's nice podcast i was gonna say the Sha show but hey same thing right so as promised I'm here giving you the details of my trip. If you follow me on IG, you know that I've been posting a couple pictures and I've been in my stories sharing pictures and videos of me on somebody's island. And I didn't say what island that was because I was just trying to be all extra secretive or whatever. Um... But I was excited to be there because I don't really know that a lot of people have been there. So I wanted to just save all of my energy and all of my information to this moment, right? And then give you guys a unique experience and the full picture of that trip. But before I get into that, I feel like I have to share with you everything that I went through just to get there, okay? So first up came the situation with my passport. So when COVID started back in the spring of 2020, I wasn't really thinking about my passport. I got my passport back in 2011 and didn't really think, oh, 2021 is around the corner. It's going to be time for me to renew my passport soon. When COVID hit, since I knew that I wasn't going anywhere, especially internationally, I was just like, oh, didn't think about the passport until it was time to think about the passport. And then I thought I heard somewhere on the grapevine that they weren't really doing passports anymore, that offices were closed or whatever the case may be. So again, I was just like, okay, well, not really at the top of my list to do. And then when it got to the fall, I realized like, oh, I could, I could probably swing going somewhere for my birthday. Maybe things will be calm or maybe something will be a little easier to do. Borders will open up a little bit and I'll be able to travel. So I decided to kick into passport gear probably in November, December. And I realized that um you need, not realize, someone told me that for certain countries, you need to have uh, at least six months on your passport, which I didn't really think about. I'm like, oh, I can go to this island. And then when I get back, I can just do my passport over. Didn't realize that there were restrictions about how much time you needed to have on your passport for some countries. That was a lesson. So if you don't know, now you know. And so I was like, okay. So then I rushed. 
I sent my passport out. I mailed it on December 10th. I paid extra money to get it there. I also paid additional funds to get it back faster. I, I paid for expedited service. And um, it didn't get to the post office until, not the post office, it didn't get into the agency until December 29th. I also went and followed up. If you go to the Passport website, it allows you to sign up for alerts. I did that. Still wasn't getting any alerts. I tried uh, looking up to see what the status was. And it was just like this general uh, status that it gave me. Like, yeah, we got your passport on this date. It's being processed. You might get it in four to six weeks. I'm like four to six weeks from when you got it or four to six weeks from when I'm reading this. Like, I don't understand where the four to six weeks begins or ends. So anyway, I was like, you know what, whatever, it's just going to be up in the air. And so during that time, I'm like making all these contingency plans in my head, like, okay, so if I don't get my passport by the time that I'm supposed to go on this trip, maybe I'll just go to Puerto Rico because then I don't really need a passport, right? So I can do that. However, I will lose out on money. So I was feeling all types of bad because it wasn't, it wasn't looking good for a little bit. And then by the grace of the universe, I received my passport on a th the Thursday before I was supposed to leave or the Friday. I'm sorry, the Friday that I was supposed to leave. I got a notice in my email saying, oh, your passport was approved. And then maybe like the next day I got a, a message saying your passport's on the way. And this is when you should you should receive it on or around X date. And so I got it the Friday before. I was supposed to leave. Okay, good. Dilemma. That that piece is done. I could breathe a little easier. Before we continue, I want to do an activity with you. Find your passport right now. If you don't have a passport, I need you to go to the post office and fill out an application to get you a passport. Okay? It's real simple. You are going to have to pay a little bit of money, but I guarantee you it will be worth it. Okay. But if you do have a passport, and you aren't quite sure when it expires, pull it out, see when it expires. And if you have less than six months, actually less than nine months on your passport left, I need you to uh, go ahead and send that on in because you don't know when you're going to need it. Okay. Okay. That also goes for your global entry card. If you don't have global entry and you are a uh, pretty uh, frequent -ish international travel lure why not go ahead and cop one yeah i think it's good for five years so if you do have a global entry card see when it expires and if it expires soon you may want to go ahead and get that process started all right thank me later so now my next dilemma was getting the covid test which i didn't think was going to be a dilemma at all because i'd been getting COVID tests since the fall, right? It's become a normal part of my life. So the thing that made this test more challenging was the Nor'easter that decided that it wanted to fall on February 1st. For the past couple years, February has been really, really good to me. Back in the day, in the 90s and early 2000s, I never really looked forward to doing anything for my birthday because we were always in, in the middle of a damn blizzard of some sort, right? But that hasn't really been the case. And I'm going to blame that on global warming. But 2021 was like, what up, bitches? It's February. Y'all not getting no mild February this year. I'm here. It starts today. What up? I was like, all right, no problem. So I made an appointment at my urgent care center, like I've been doing since the fall, and had an appointment for 8, 15 in the morning. Wake up, see the snow, not happy about it, taking the stuff off my car, getting up early to make sure to get there in time, give myself a little extra time to get to the facility drive up to the facility. It's looking mad dry. It's looking a little deserted. There are no cars in here. There's been no plowing done. 
The office is looking pretty dark. I don't see a sign in the wall. However, I haven't received any communication that they were going to be closed because of the storm. I mean, this is Connecticut. We're in the middle of New England. This should be a norm. You guys know whether or not you're going to be opening up. I'm thinking, right? I knew it was coming. Y'all knew it was coming. You could have, you could have, you could have sent out a communication, but no. So it's looking pretty closed. So now I'm in the parking lot with my travel partner trying to figure out, okay, well, what are we going to do now? So we're looking up places. Where else can we go to get this test done? Because the, the clock is ticking. We need this joint by Thursday. It's currently Monday. We need to submit uh, documentation to the airlines that say we've had a test done within the past three days. So while we're looking for another spot and, and trying to make another reservations out, another reservations Oh my God, why can I say that? Make another reservation elsewhere. I then get a call that the place is closed. I'm like, I know you're closed, dear. Do you know how I know you're closed? Because I'm sitting in the parking lot. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. No, you're not. All you had to do was send this communication out a little bit earlier. Like, why are you calling me at 825 when my appointment was at 8 and 815? Like you should be sending out this communication at seven o'clock in the morning so that people will know. What if I didn't live 15 minutes away? What if I live like an hour or two hour away? I'm coming here because this is the only option for me. And you're only now telling me when I get here. That's not okay. That's not okay. And this is the stuff that pisses me off about organizations and operations, but I won't get into that. Anyway, found another facility. We end up driving another 15 minutes in the blizzard i'm calling it a blizzard but it's probably not as bad but we're driving another 15 minutes to this new spot right get there and the women are nice there are people there someone's there plowing their lot and he was doing a damn good job if you saw my stories yo bob was doing his thing i don't know if that's his name but it was a great parking it was a great parking lot plowing job so i get we get inside and the women are like yeah we'll we'll take your test however you might want to call this number because we've been giving this number to everyone coming in and needing it for travel requirements. And if you call this number, they're going to be able to flag your results and get it to you usually by the time that you need it for your flight. Okay, cool. This sounds cool, right? So we get on the phone, call the number, chick who picks up seems to be unfamiliar with the process. And she's like, well, I don't know why they told you to call us. And we're like, what? And she's like, well, do do they not want you to take the test there? They're like, they don't have a problem giving us a test. It's just that they're saying that if we call you, you can just flag our stuff. That took mad long for no reason. Ended up giving the phone to the women inside so they can talk to this woman directly. And they're like, we don't understand what the problem is. We've been doing this since March. This is the first time that we're calling and having some issues. So I'm just like, of course, of course, today will be the day when I need you to just do this thing. We got to get the chick on the phone who's clueless anyway, end up sorting it out. But guess what? We got to drive somewhere else another 30 minutes to an actual hospital to do an outside uh, COVID test, you know, under the tent or whatever. That was my first drive through COVID test. Get there, do the test, go back. Now, just to reassure ourselves, we call the number again, like, hey, we called earlier to make sure that our test could be flagged. We just took the test. Now we want to make sure that in your system, it says that we're good to go and that our tests are flagged. That guy, simple ting. He was like, yep, y'all are good here. Y'all are traveling on this day. Yep, you're good. Cool. All right, cool. Now I'm like, okay, is the system really going to work, though? Is it really going to work? Can I trust the system? 24 hours later, guess what was in my inbox? My test results. I was like, okay, system, I see you, boo. I see you. I see you lining up. I see you want me to celebrate this great 38. I see you want me to travel across international waters. I respect it. I respect it. So, It seemed to work. The ladies at the second spot knew what they were talking about. They flagged our stuff. And when I got the results, it said flagged for travel. I was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. So 
I don't know if this is a thing across the board or if this is just a Connecticut thing or whatever, but it worked out. The difference was we, we were sent to an actual hospital and apparently there are different laboratories that the hospitals use to send away results or right, or to send, you know, the labs or whatever. Um, and so for example, this hospital have three labs. I don't know that they have three labs. I'm just trying to give this to you as an example, right? So the hospital may send it to lab A if they know that people are traveling. If they know that someone doesn't need a lab rush and it's just a normal, normal COVID test, then they might send it to lab B. If it's for some other reason, medical or what have you, that's an emergency, they might send it to lab C. Um, and so lab A, which is where our test results went for travel, got it back to us within 24 hours. Now, again, they can't guarantee that you're going to get it in that time and they're going to say that they can't guarantee it, but we got it. That was all that matters. So that is my COVID testing situation. And I'll share the information about the return trip later on at this process because that was a little different. Mm. (laughs) <laughs> have I made you wait? Have I made you wait too long? It's time for me to tell you where I went, isn't it? I guess it is. So I went to this little island off the coast. Is it the coast? I went to this little island off of Honduras called Roatan. And I was so excited i had actually never heard of it until a couple in the fall it was the first time that i heard about roatan i'm like okay cool we can do that and the way that we got there was clearly by airline now all of my covid travels i have been using either delta or JetBlue. I think I stopped using American Airlines like years ago, unless it was absolutely necessary and there was no other way to do the 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 flights. I always used, again, Delta or JetBlue. Um, so for this trip, we actually used points. Um My travel partner had some points. I had some points. We called American to uh, put our points together, worked out. And honestly, we only ended up paying like $74 each for the tickets, which would have been about, uh, I think, 500 something each person. And I was like, okay, this is dope. This is dope. Pay seventy four dollars for this flight. It's gonna be bomb. Um, all I gotta pay for is the lodging. Okay, this is lit. This is lit. This is the way to do. This is the way to turn up for uh, birthday celebrations. Let's do it. Why not? So this is all nice and gravy and dandy until get to the airport and get on the plane. Now, I already told you the passport story. I already told you the COVID story. Now we're just there, getting to the airport. Sit in the seats. When we did seat selection and when the lady gave us the seats, it was, there was a space. There was the middle seat was not taken, right? And the way that it looked on the outline was that all the middle seats were not taken. Get on the plane. Someone rolled up to me. Now I sit in the aisle. Someone rolled up to me. was like, yeah, this, uh, Spanish guy and didn't seem like he spoke a lot of English and he was just like yeah it's my seat and I just looked up at him I wish I did this on video so you could see my face (laughs) I looked up I was like this is your seat what do you mean no are you are you sure this like this seat right here and he's like yeah and I almost I almost asked this man to double check his his boarding pass because I was just so like wait no 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 this is not happening like houseway because in my mind in my mind 
I was already boarding at group six. If you didn't have a seat assignment, you should have been group seven. So group six should have been like the last group, almost the second to last group that was going to be called on the plane. So there should not be that much, many more people coming on board. This man was like, no, that's my seat. When I tell you I was so tight and then my, I don't have anxiety, right? Like I'm normally a calm person. You know, I don't really get rattled like that. And the the moment that I saw how many more people were coming on that plane, I just, the, the skin crawlies, all of it started to happen. And I was low-key freaking out. And my travel partner was like, you good? I was like, no, I am not okay. I am not okay. People were walking on and they weren't wearing their masks properly. One dude had like, it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. And there was just so much going on the normal shit, but it just seemed heightened because it's just COVID times. And I'm like pissed. I'm like, y'all really packed out this plane. And it was the biggest plane I had ever flown on. And I am not exaggerating. And they, they filled it up. They filled that plane up. And I was so disgusted y'all don't give a fuck about my safety or anybody's safety on here y'all are just being the greed it was just like money signs were everywhere and I was like this is this is why people don't like American Airlines and I remember back in the day that's all my mother that's all not even my mother that's all my family flew American this American that American going to talks and gay because yeah American American man you couldn't tell them people anything else about any other airline because all they knew was American to this to the to this day you know like I'm just now like getting my mother out of the American airline flow like now she's you know hopping on JetBlue and stuff like that but I'm just like sis there are other things out there you got to get people out of these habits man so anyway yeah I was tight so I ended up just shifting over and then that man who said that he was supposed to be sitting in the middle ended up switching seats with some other guy and I was just like you know what I'm good and so I was just uptight the entire time (laughs) up like I was just mad the the flight attendants were not enforcing the mask like I mean they were but they weren't and they weren't wearing gloves they were passing out stuff and they weren't like I'm just like "Mm, this is there's this is all this is all types of wrong. And yeah, so that was that for the first flight. The second flight was okay. It was a smaller plane. Um, the crew on that flight actually did space people out. Clearly, there weren't as many passengers because hardly anybody was going to row a time. But like when you when we hit Florida and we go to <laughs> go to the the gate and you just see the difference immediately um between the north and the south and like there were no barriers between seats and the gates people were like mad lackadaisical with their mask wearing if I'm using that word properly and I'm just I was just like yo every time I pass through Florida I'm just like get me the fuck out of this state Oh, Cheeto did some damage, man. I was even annoyed coming back because there was a group of people who all seemed to be together, who all seemed to be hailing from Florida, who all were lacking lots of melanin and just seeming really, really uh, privileged, you know? And the thing... What pissed me off so much about American Airlines was the lack of accountability that I was seeing. Um, They were just punks. At the end of the day, that's really just boiled down to the American Airlines staff were punks. You had this group. (laughs) Uh, I'm sorry. I'm pausing because I'm trying to like just I'm putting myself back there and getting annoyed all over again. Like you had this group of people who the flight attendants did not want to say anything to them. Like this man is requesting a Coke from you. He's requesting a drink from you. His mask is fully down. And instead of you telling him to put the mask up, you say, yes, sir, go get the Coke, bring it back to him. Face mask still down. 
and you don't say anything to him. Where's the reinforcement? Because you're a punk. You pass up and down the aisle. You're collecting trash from him and his little partners, right? Tommy Lee, Jimmy Bob and them. And you don't want to tell them nothing. And then in my mind, I'm like, hmm, I wonder how that would go if they weren't white, right? Like, what would that have looked like if some black dude from the hood was on the, tr- on the, on the plane with his mask down? Would you have said anything to him? Would you have just let that go? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, why, why did you not tell these people to pull the shit up? That's your job. That is your job. Legit, legit, that is your job. Anyway, so it's just little shit like that that pissed me off. Oh, and I was just too happy, too happy to get off the plane. And they kept saying dump. They kept saying shit like, oh, so great to be back on American soil. Well, why the fuck did you leave? Why did you leave? Just stay here. Stay here and bask in your red, white, and blue itism. But yeah, avoid American Airlines. And then these fools had the audacity to ask me how they were to fill out a survey with let me pull that up so you can see what I put I was too excited to fill this out they said where if at all did you have any COVID-19 safety concerns during your recent journey you know I clicked most of these I clicked at checkout at the ticket counter at the kiosk Clearing TSA, waiting in the gate area, while on the jet bridge, while finding my seat, in proximity to other passengers, interacting with the flight attendants, deplaning, all of those, all of those. I think there were only, what, three that I didn't check? I did not feel safe. I did not feel like you had any COVID-19 practices going on for you. I felt like this was a regular ass flight pre-COVID-19. Check yourself, American Airlines. Check yourself, because you already wrecked yourself. All right, so let me give you some information about the trip and the island and all of that jazz. So the currency that they use in Honduras and in Roatan is lempiras. 24 lempiras is about one U.S. dollar. Some other facts, the rainy season just ended according to our tour guide and summer basically for them is now beginning and that's going to last about eight months. I really wish I could just live somewhere with eight months of summer. And even when their cooler months happen, it's it's not even getting anywhere close to what I get here in Connecticut. Like their cooler months, we're talking 65, you know, like that's definitely reasonable. Anyway, so the island of Roatan, according to Alex, is about three miles wide by 35 miles long. So I find that quite interesting because when I think about Grand Turk, we're three miles wide and seven miles long. So yeah, the island is absolutely, just absolutely gorgeous. Can you really go wrong with an island? I mean, really? The waters in Roatan, at least, actually, yeah, the waters everywhere that I looked were just crystal clear. Like looking down can legit see stingrays clear as day it was everything everything we stayed in west end which honestly reminded me of being in the gap in barbados right it was like this nice little area where we were able to get just about everything we needed the goal for the trip was strictly relaxation so it was perfect right it wasn't like we were looking for parties and fets and all these things to go to or trying to be close to the action no no i just I just needed somewhere to sit down. So we were in walking distance to a lot of things, to the gas stations, which had an ATM and it had like basic grocery needs. Um, The strip that we were on had numerous restaurants to choose from and majority of them were on WhatsApp. So we were able to place orders. We were able to make reservations and just communicate with restaurants pretty easily, which was which was pretty dope. We stayed for seven nights. Sorry, not seven nights, seven days. And of those days, we unknowingly dedicated like two of those days to adventures so when initially signing up for the activities like I didn't realize that the shits were gonna last as long as they did I didn't realize I was gonna be with these people all day and so it was it was I mean it was money well spent I have absolutely zero complaints so for the first adventure we went 
on a boat ride with a crew, Aaron and the Sun Diver staff. And then there were five other individuals on the boat who were joining us for the day. So we took the boat ride out. It was lovely. I'm not going to give you the details of what happened (laughs) on the boat. Okay, I will give you the details. So I ate breakfast, right? And ended up getting on the boat for 845. Halfway through, we stopped. We saw some dolphins. It was really nice. We stopped and we also like put some lines in to fish and you know it was pretty cool and then my belly was like what is going on now mind you I love boats right I have no problem at least in the past I've had no problem being on boats I enjoy it I love looking at the water and all of a sudden my stomach was like nah sis this ain't it this ain't it and then you know my breakfast just went overboard out of my mouth and into the ocean I did that like mm, I think three times happy birthday to me (laughs) so I was just like oh but after that though it was great it was great I felt so much better but I'm so pissed though because that was a really good breakfast I had a nice little western omelet had some toast had my tea Mm -mm, gone anyway so we're basically going out to Cayos Cochinos which is a small group of islands um on the northern coast of Honduras and so like there's they're like little separate islands though So they're like, you know, they're like little keys, right? And majority of them are uninhabited, but then there are uh, two larger islands which have like probably, you know, less than 100 people on them. There's no cars. The only way that you're going to get there is by boat and everybody's just walking or you got a bike or something like that. Like that's the setup. Um, So we went to one of the uninhabited islands first, spent some time there snorkeling, taking pictures and just hanging out. And then after that, we took after like an hour and some change there, we took the boat and we went to the inhabited island and we gave them the fish that we caught. Um, And we also they prepared uh, food for us. So they came up with this big platter of fish big platter of plantain they had bread they had sweet bread they had um what I don't remember what it's called but it's basically like a coconut it's like a coconut dessert and it reminds me in Turks of what we call deuce which is coconut and pineapple together so yeah I forget what it's called but it was really good there are they're called Garifuna people. And they those were the people that were on that inhabited island in Cayos Cochinos. And basically the British, and I'm taking this from RoatanOnline.com just so you can have that info. You know, I got to cite my sources. Can't be out here just claiming stuff because I did not say this, but I'm sharing it to you. So uh, basically the British brought the Garifuna people to Roatan. And the Garifuna people are like a mixed race of descendants. They are like mixed with people from West Africa and the Carib Islands and Central Africa. And the British people used to call them the Black Caribs. It was their way of distinguishing them from the red people or the yellow people who were the original inhabitants of that location right before they mixed with Africans. The Garifuna people and where we were in Cayos Cochinos, like it was it was a Jamaican vibe where in some parts of Roatan where we saw fair skinned people or people who were from the mainland of Honduras or, you know, just whites. Like I immediately connected to the Garifuna people whenever I saw them. And I was just like, "Ah, my people, my people. Um, So that was great. The food at Cayos Cochinos was so good. It was so well seasoned. It was it was definitely different than the food we experienced at that time so far being in West End. After we ate, we went back out on the sea. We uh did some more quote unquote fishing and then by the time we got back, it was you know, it was dark. Made some friends of course, had some enlightenment in conversations learned a lot because the couples that were there were there for months you know like they were either one couple was 
was about to buy land and then the other couple was already had they been there from November and they continue to just extend their stay and extend their stay so it was pretty it was pretty cool and I was just like you know what this is this is what I need to to be organizing my life to be like this because this right here this 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 cold weather situation is not is not what's popping the next day we did an island tour and that was inclusive of the first thing that we did was um, zip lining. And that was in the same venue as where the animals were. So we saw the sloths and we saw the monkeys and we saw the birds and all these other um, little animals. And it was very uh, interactive uh, experience. And then after that, we did a driving tour around the island, saw some stuff. And on that tour, honestly, it reminded me of being in Jamaica. Like a, we did a, a drive to Ochi one time and it reminded me of that. And then it also reminded me of being in Dominica as well. So there's a lot of similarity that I see with other countries that I've been in. We also did a mangrove tour on a little boat because Roatan does have this section um, on the country where it remind, I was like, this is like a little Caribbean Venice, right? Where you, the only way to get to certain things are on water taxis. After that, we did a drive to Punta Gorda, which was another spot of Garifuna people where uh, we went, we ate all oh, the food, the food. Yes, the food. That best ceviche I ever had probably best and only ceviche I've ever had because I've never really taken the time out to taste it or order it for myself. But when I tell you that thing hit slapping and it wasn't just ceviche, it was ceviche with, um, with fish and conch. And I was like, yo, makes me want to make some conch salad, but it was so good. The red snapper that they gave me. Mm. Yes. And coconut rice. You can tell that that coconut was perfectly picked and fresh and you could taste it in the rice. There wasn't no coconut milk situation. No, that was a fresh coconut rice and peas. It was great. And then we saw them dancing and um, drumming and live music or whatever. It was just so nice. It was so nice. Again, my people, my people. In another day and time, I probably would have been led to join them into dancing, but my spirit wasn't leading me to do that, but it was a nice experience. And I will say that there are a lot of, there are a lot of people out there getting their hustle on, um, but we try to do our best to save the coins and to support the Garifuna <laughs> whenever possible. Like I wanted to go into the community and I, I, that might seem bad for some, but it's like, no, I'm supporting my people. As far as food goes, you know, I like to eat authentic things when I'm in certain places. So Machuca is something that was highly recommended. We had that. I wasn't like a greatest fan of it. It was cool. If you are of um, African descent and used to Gari and, and, and whatnot, the Machuca might be very appealing to you. They make theirs with, um, with plantain instead of cassava. Highly recommend the ceviche with the fish and conch only from that place in Punta Gorda though. And other than that, I don't know that any other food item stuck out. Had the best rum cake in one a while there from this Creole place on the strip. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm going to put all of my food recommendations and all of this, everything that I'm saying right now, I'm going to put it in the show notes or basically like in the podcast blog on my webpage for this. And I'm probably going to do an IG live. I don't know when this episode is going to air. It's supposed to air tomorrow, but I might need time to edit it. So we'll see. But yeah, that's my trip in a nutshell I had a great time um oh hold on all right so before I go I have to tell you about this situation getting the COVID test to go back to the United States because you know that is now a requirement I was a little concerned at first and I communicated with our um 
representative of where we were staying. And, you know, they were able to have someone uh, from one of the medical centers come to our hotel and administer the test. At first, I had made an appointment with the local hospital. Um, but once I found out that they could just, that someone could come to our hotel, I was like, oh, let's just do that. It's less of a hassle. And, you know, we can just get the results um, in a convenient location and not have to wait around in this public area or whatever. So someone came with her whole setup or whatever, and we did the testing out on the patio. Now, normally, like I've been used to COVID tests where, you know, they just stick it in your nose a little bit, swirl it around for 15 swishes, go into other nostrils, swirl it around. Nothing really crazy. Listen, when I tell you this was the worst, this was the worst COVID test that I have ever, 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 ever had. It was bad. She went all up in my brain. And I'm pretty sure I'm like, is that even okay? And the worst part was I saw her do it to someone else first. And I was like, oh my God, are you okay? Like I was legit concerned. And I'm like, I don't know if I should have went first or second. Because now, now, now I know what to expect. And it was just, it did not feel good at all. At all, at all. Oh, so I'm just just brace yourself I don't know if that's a Honduras thing I don't know if that's how they taught them to do it but I guess I guess I mean it came back negative so we're good here um but yeah so she came she she showed us the results it was an antigen test we didn't need to get a PCR and I think it was about uh 70 US dollars the PCR test over there costs about 250 US dollars because they have to send it away to the mainland and then send it back so that's why it costs so much but US allows you to do an antigen test so hey why not take the cheaper route for the same results about a couple hours after we took the test someone came back with a printout of our results that we were able to use for um, the return trip home just be prepared if you do choose to go there and I think that's just normal standard with going anywhere internationally that you're not quite familiar with is just be prepared to fill out a lot of documentation sometimes you're like didn't I fill this out already or you know whatever you complete going down to the island make sure that you hold on to it and so that you have it to present upon your exit getting in Rotan was pretty pretty simple they had a, a simple process you know they they fingerprinted I went through thinking that I'm gonna now have to go through this customs line and I, I walked out and it was just like oh oh that's it oh everything's done oh we're here oh shoot I'm gonna do nothing else okay cool right? It was simple. And even going back, it was simple as well. It's just a lot of paperwork and just making sure that you fill everything out that you need to. That's basically it. It was pretty, uh, pretty easy breezy. Now, I don't know what it's going to be like if you choose to go a month or two or four or six, whatever from now, it might, things might change, but this is how it was last week at the top of 2021 in February. All right. If you have questions, don't hesitate to holler at your girl. Enjoy. Hold up. Wait a minute. So you absolutely do not have to stick around for this portion of the podcast. This is just me doing a light social media rant slash appreciation for the 4,000 followers that I gained the day after my birthday. So if you want to, here's this. All right. So not only did I reach a birthday milestone I think every birthday is really a milestone honestly so yeah I turned 38 which was like amazing but like the day after I think it was I woke up to like 4,000 followers and I had been looking at it for a couple of days and it was like fluctuating between 3,998 and 3,996 and I'm like okay well when are we gonna get to like 4,000 because that would be pretty exciting to me. Now, I will say that I'm not big on numbers. I don't stress out about how many likes I have. I don't stress out about how many followers I have. I think I do appreciate the number of followers that I have, but I'm not like, oh my God, this person didn't like my page or, and I definitely don't have that app to see whether or not someone unfollowed me. I'm like, why do we, why does that even exist? Who cares? Yeah, like I've never been 
that person. I've never really been about numbers. I just want to have quality followers. I want people to be on my page because I know that they like my content. You know, like I don't follow people if I don't like their their content. I don't follow people if I'm going to sit up here and post a bunch of negative comments. I, at that part, I will never, ever, ever understand. If you don't like what somebody is doing, why are you on their page? Anyway, I digress. But I said all that to say, I appreciate the people who are on the page and I feel like they are authentic. And I also feel as though like I'm more and I, and maybe you realize this already if you're following me but I kind of go with the flow I used to kind of stress out about content and trying to be consistent or relevant or whatever and I'm like no nah, you know what I'm just gonna post what I want to post when I want to post it and I'm gonna post it because I feel like posting it and if I don't feel like posting anything guess what nothing's going to be posted that day. If I don't post a throwback on a Thursday, oh, well. If I don't post anything on a week, oh, well. And I used to like, you know what? Let me explain myself. Let me tell them that I'm doing this. Let me tell them I'm doing that. I mean, that's a courtesy, but I really don't have to do that. And, you know, it is what it is. And y'all see stuff on there when I'm ready. That's just how, that's just how I flow. And I understand that I also have a business, but for the people who are here and they understand me, you get it. You know, like my website is is still there. I'm not stressing. I do the I do what I do because I like it. Right? Like I make jewelry because I like it. Like I'm not trying to make a living off of jewelry making. I'm not trying to make a living off of being a carnival junkie I do all of these things because I like it and I like to share right so that's kind of why I'm here and I think when I think about my purpose and what I want out of this that is what I have to remind myself like I'm not doing this for the funds I'm just doing because you know what I'm good at this other people seem to really enjoy what I do I enjoy having these creative burst and everybody's going to benefit from it. Who wants to benefit from it? That's that. Like I have a whole nine to five, you know, like I have a career. Um, I enjoy doing that too. So it's like the moment that I no longer care to do these things, I won't do them. <laughs> right. When I don't feel like making jewelry anymore, I'm going to stop. Um, so it's like, I'm not going to force myself to continue to do things that I'm not happy doing, period. Right. Like if I if I lose followers, I lose them. If I lose supporters, I lose them. I'm going to be all right, though. So there's that for the follower thing. I think I just really wanted to say that um, and and give and give inspiration for those who might be struggling in that area as well. It's like, OK, if if you really want your hustle to be that thing and you're that passionate about whatever it is and that's what you want to be your life and to be your career and to be what you are known for, then go forth and put in all of that energy into that thing. But I do so much and I'm and and that's not even to be snobbish or conceited or right like it's just the fact like I like to do a lot of things I like to have my hands in a lot of things and it's not it's not a force it's just naturally what I do which is why I'm like you know what whoever's on my page whoever's following me like you have to be okay with not seeing consistency with one thing you have to be okay with the variety of stuff that I present because that is me right and if I don't do those things if I'm forcing myself to just post jewelry that's gonna be a problem if I'm posting my, myself and I'm just posting I don't know carnival stuff that's a problem because I'm not just that one thing be you be your authentic self I'm posting what I want to post it's social media so I'm being social with you I'm having fun putting stuff on this platform to make people laugh, to educate people about certain things and to offer my services when I feel like it. And that's one of the reasons why I kind of took a break from custom orders because I felt like it was becoming too uh, daunting. 
But guess what? Now I'm in a mood where it's like, ooh, I think I want to open up custom orders again because I want to see what people uh, give to me. I want to expand my creative horizons and see what I can come up with with these custom requests. So yeah, that might be coming out soon again because I'm just like itching. I'm just like in a creative mood, right? So when things flow freely and authentically and organically and naturally, I feel like you get better results, Okay, so when that custom window does open, just know that it's not going to stay open all the time. And this also leads me to being someone who I don't like to. This is I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I don't like to (laughs) I don't like to commit to events too early because I could be in a good mood at that time that I said yes, but then when I get closer to that time and I don't feel like going or I realize that, you know what, ooh, I just had all this going on and I'm going to be tired here or I just really don't feel like going anymore, then it's like, yeah, I need to do a better job of just not agreeing up front, right, and just being tentative. I have a friend and she's like, yeah, everything, everything is tentative, until it's not. And that's just where I am. That's where I am right now. I'm like, you know what? I'm not agreeing to that. I'm not agreeing to that at all. And it's very hard for me to uh, say no to things, especially in February, because it's like turn up season for me. I'm like, yeah, I'm going, I'm going. Um, but yeah, no, no. Uh, it, my, my introvert self be screaming out sometimes. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I love you. But it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> but depending on depending on my mood it's like yeah you know what maybe I will go but anyway I just needed to say that as well all right all right you guys I'm done for real this time shout out to April Eudora my bestie for the intro that you heard we've been playing around for months with this intro music she has written something for me she just got her new mic so she's probably going to record it all over again Um, so that's why you haven't heard an official theme song but it's coming we're working on something and it's going to be fun so there's that highlight your girl thank you so much for listening to my rant and to this long ass episode i appreciate you make sure that you like this share it subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform that you like to listen to it on and if you have apple please 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 leave a review on apple podcast all right later